First news, UK drug addict jihadist captured in London, United Kingdom. Um, a supporter of ISIS has been jailed for life with a minimum of 14 years after admitting a plot to blow herself up in a bomb attack on St. Paul's Cathedral in London. Safia Sheikh was born Michelle Ramsden in 18, 1983 and converted to Islam in 2007 after being impressed by the kindness of a neighboring Muslim family. Her adoption of the faith came after a deeply troubled upbringing. She'd spent time in care homes and later become an addict. Evidence from court shows that she was in contact with members of um, Al-Mujirun, uh, the British network headed by the jihadist preacher Amjim Chowdhury. Uh, undercover agents intervened in her terrorist plot and she was arrested a few days after receiving what she believed to be the bombs necessary for her act. I never get that idea like, oh, I met some nice people from this religion, so I converted to that religion. Or and and it doesn't work the other way around. Like, oh, I met some people from this religion that were bad people, so I left it. Really, that's your reasoning for leaving the religion? This is why I say to people that you know, even if every single atheist out there was an asshole, that still is no proof for the existence of God. There is still no there's still atheism still stands because there's no evidence. And even if like for example, let's say Islam, even if Islam was not responsible for any crimes, any terrorism, any violence, any misery, and every single Muslim out there was the nicest person you've ever met, and non-Muslims were assholes, and every single Muslim was just the kindest, sweetest person you've ever met. The Quran is still horseshit. The Quran and the Islamic ideology is still a barbaric, violent, um, you know, a book of claims with no evidence. That that doesn't change. Okay, you don't decide if an ideology is right or wrong based on how good the people or good or bad the people who believe it are. Anyways, that's my... So, I obviously agree, but that's coming at it from your very... Oh, thank you for the donation, Soraya. That's awesome. Um, thank you for the super chat. So, what I was saying was that you're obviously taking it from a completely rational standpoint. So, this is someone who'd struggled with mental illness and drug addiction for a very long time. And through reading through her story, it's very clear to me that she was seeking any sense of belonging that she could find, right? So, people are not driven into ideologies purely based off of the evidence for how um, correct or how rational that ideology is. She was looking for someone that could provide her a sense of community. And also what was reiterated to me in this article in the BBC was how she had this desire to get into Jannah. She wanted to get into heaven. She wanted a place of happiness and peace. And to do that, she was willing to conduct this terrorist plot. I think she was looking for relief from her suffering in a certain way. In fact, the police couldn't even interview her the day after they arrested her because she was going through heroin withdrawals. So she was actively using throughout her terrorist days, so to speak. Um, this is someone who I don't think was able to think as rationally as you. Yeah, and that's what religion takes advantage of uh, of our vulnerabilities. Oh, Certainly. I said that right. Rivka. Well, actually, I have a lot to say on this topic, a lot. Specifically what you said, Armin, and then to piggyback on Susanna. So I'm going to start off actually with Susanna because it's easier to go into what I'm going to say, is that you were bringing up the mental health thing, and I think that that's super valid. She's young. She's had was searching for family life for a long time had been in care homes so this is an opportunity for her to find people who are helping her they're giving her something that she's looking for also often particularly with these young radicals hold on we're seeing that there's a lot of identity tied up in the religion or proving yourself or that's who you are and to me she seems like a really good candidate for that and a lot of cults whether they're accepted cults or not even if they're doing it behind their own back say to so to speak 
You know, they still want more recruits. So they prey on people like this. And sometimes it has really awesome outcomes. And other times, you know, you get this. And I think this sense of identity for her, it fits really well because she's trying to leave behind what she doesn't want to be and what she was. Okay. In care home, a drug addict, no purpose no family. And so now she's got all this family, et cetera. So which leads me to my next point. This is the one thing that religion does better than atheists, in my opinion, in community wise, sometimes amongst us, when, is that they provide a lot of community support for all kinds of things that somehow isn't the same in terms of having a, a vast atheist network that's helping with births, deaths, marriages, you know, your kids being bad, watching your kids after school, um, you know, things like that, that you can immediately turn to. Some people have it, but some people don't. And I always use the example of I had a friend, uh, ex-Muslim atheist who had to flee his country in the Middle East because Everybody found out he was an atheist when he made a speech in London and he came to Texas. We it was great. We all came together and helped him with that. But I asked him, who's who's picking you up at the airport? And he said, no one. And then we, I arranged it. We arranged it. But my point in saying this is if this guy was a Christian, they would have been fighting each other to pick him up. He would have had an apartment and a job and they would have taken him around. Same thing if he was Muslim, right? They had a Mercedes to pick him up to give him a job at the local Arab store. I know I'm making stereotypes, but it's true, you know, and Jewish people too. There's Hindus, there's all kinds of, so my point is I wish we could do that better and have more of a support network because I think then maybe it would be, a lot easier for people who are trying to leave, particularly mothers with children or people with problems or mental health to find support because this is there for them a lot in a way that I want and would hope that we could be without the woo woo and the God stuff and the rules and the, you know, blowing stuff up. Yeah, I mean, this is what, but one reason why the atheist community is not there for each other as much as other communities are is because a lot of atheists think like, oh, if we build communities, we just become just like religions now. Right, like, I know that. I've heard that And argument. it's so dumb because, okay, great job, guys. Let's just give them community, the monopoly of having communities to religions, right? This is why religion is managing to convince everybody that you, uh, that you need them, right? Like, there are better alternatives to providing community than religious ones that comes with a lot of garbage, religious garbage. Exactly. And we need to be able to, we can, we can do so much better than what religion offers, but apparently we don't want to do that because we're so allergic about anything. Like when you say this looks like religion, you're actually con co confirming to religions that they own community. They, they have a monopoly over community, over charity, over all of that. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> no, I like that. Thank you. Um, anyways, no, I completely agree. I completely agree. Um, I want right. to say one last thing that's not heavy. How much is this like some crazy movie? So this British drug addict, Muslim convert, ISIS terrorist. It's just, it sounds like something you'd see on, you know, on the BBC. <laughs> no, I yeah, I mean, in the movie, if it was in a movie, we'd be like, oh, this is too much. The plot mm -hmm. is not believable. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> and that she's getting high the whole time too. Right, right. While she's, uh, yeah. and up, I want to, hmm, I want to give a one quote because she chose St. Paul's Cathedral for a specific reason. She said, I would like to do church, but want to do this. These are screenshots from messages, um, but want to do a place that also has meaning to Kafar, like history, that they care more about buildings than people killed. You know where they do the royal weddings? It's possible. Is it possible to put like a bomb with a detonator and then keep shooting until I'm killed? So she wanted to hit people where it hurt, so to speak. Um, but after Shopum contributes, I want to give another plug. 
No, I, w I was actually about to say the, uh, this quote, so yeah. I'm back. Uh, I want to make a comment too. Oh, go ahead. Do you want? Oh, I was just going to say piggyback, piggybacking off of what Rivka was saying earlier about um, a lack of support amongst our own community. This is why it is so, so, so important to support organizations like Atheist Alliance International and their Atheist Support Network. They are one of the most central, I work with them all the time, with finding people who are being actively persecuted and helping them with these cases. And they are actually looking for volunteers right now to help them. So if you're interested in being an active part of helping persecuted atheists and non-believers, please look into the Atheist Support Network at AAI. And this also includes Secular Rescue from the Center uh, for Freedom and Inquiry. And this also includes the um, recent Atheist Refugee Assistance Program that's going on in Turkey that we talked to um, Onar Romano recently. Oh, am I frozen? Yeah, you're frozen. Just turn Shoot. off your mic. It's a, it, okay, you just turn your cam off and on like this really fast. It will come back. Yeah, like Okay, hopefully. Oh, no, it didn't work. Okay, well, I'm just going to finish my sentence. Um, sure. So basically, the Atheist Refugee Assistance Program is a really important program that's happening in Turkey right now because Turkey has millions of refugees that enter their country while they're trying to escape even more authoritarian Islamic countries. They have to go to Turkey, which is becoming increasingly Islam is Islamist and Islamized. And um, they are doing really, really important work to help support these people. And in fact, a lot of atheist refugees have to lie about their faith to get covered by Christian organizations, for example, to get the support like Rivka was mentioning. And so that's my passion is really rallying people together to make sure that we do offer these supports. Okay, Anyways. I just want to I just want to point out that Susanna is the CEO of ASAP Republic, and she promoted every single community building initiative out there except Atheist Republic's own concept. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, and that's true. We do do really important work of helping people with that important aspect of community and belongingness which are some of the most important predictors of if someone will fall into an absolutist right. and toxic ideology. So check out our website and join one of our consulates. Yes. Um, uh, I mean, I, I wanted to like, this was interesting to me to, uh, to say it here, like uh, what she said about it. Like, uh, it's kind of like what you did back in your childhood. She said like, she would rather die young because she was afraid of going to heaven, a uh, hell, and she would rather die young and go to heaven. So I thought that was uh, really similar to you. I found that interesting. Oh, wow. That's, oh, my that gosh. Is interesting. Thank you for noticing. We got a $20 super chat from Sayed Ibrahim. Thank you so much. $20. Wow, very generous. And we also, got a, we also got a very kind, kind <laughs> support from Michael Sherlock. Uh, Michael's the best. Yeah. Oh my okay. god. Oh Hemin. Um oh, Hemin is here, yes. Yeah. It's nice okay. to see my friends. I in want the to chat. say one more thing though. I know we've been talking about this a lot, but I think it touches on so many things that Atheist Republic does and is about. Because Susanna was saying that Atheist and Armin brought up Atheist Republic and Susanna brought it together saying that it provides this sense of community, it gives people a sense that they're not alone, it has a place to be, identity, all these things. And one of the things that all extremists have in common, whether they're religious extremists or, you know, vegan extremists, is that they are isolated within their own closed circle, right? So um, breaking that isolation and then people, so when they leave that, where do they go? Well, they have this and it, I, so I think it's helpful. And then the other thing that people always bring up is, well, he was such a, he was a drinker or a drug act, or he was in jail for petty theft for ter terrorist act. A lot of Muslim terrorists often. And I think this woman really encompasses this redemption narrative that is part of, for a lot of people mm. who commit some of these, 
And I think it's helpful for people to understand that because you get a lot of pushback. Well, he's not really a Muslim or he's not that religious. So the religion doesn't have anything to do with it, even though the person, you know, says that it does. And lastly, um, with regard to your helping uh, atheists, I have to give a shout out also CFI, um, Secular Rescue and uh, Freedom From Religion Foundation, Non-Belief Relief. They've also helped with several um, folks that I've, you know, been working with. So thanks everybody for that. Yeah. And I just want to clarify one thing. I feel like a lot of people, um, and maybe this might be an American thing, um, but tend to use mental illness kind of as an excuse for these terrorist acts. And I just want to clarify that that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm trying to give a full, a full picture of what contributes to how people get drawn into a situation like this. And um, I mean, it's part of just like who I am. I have a, a heart that's probably too big, but I feel really sad for her. The quotes are heartbreaking. She's saying, um, where was it? I've had a really horrible path. I want forgiveness for everything I've done in my life. I'm scared of not going to Jhunum. I've had enough of this place. I want to give something back. And so I feel heartbroken for anyone who thinks that this is the way that they give something back. Right? Um, I'm just going to quickly read the two quotes and then um, because we spent so much time. Spencer Lucas saying atheist. Thank you, Spencer. Uh, he's saying atheist republic has done amazing things and normalizing atheists is high among them. And here's another one from Michael Schillack saying, seriously speaking, atheist republic is the atheist organization. Oh, thank you. Armin, Ali, Susanna, all you guys, and um, Shopam and Rivka, all you guys should really be proud. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but yeah, just because Susanna didn't explain this very well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm going to mention the consulates are basically, if you go to our website and you find our consulates, basically what we have done is created a group for every major city around the world so that, to help people find atheists close to where they live uh, and meet up. Not during COVID area, by the way. Do not meet up during right now. Uh, but that's the purpose of it. And if you don't find a consulate in your city, there's an application for you to start one. News, thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why, What has? what's holding you back, okay? If you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like, bell, <laughs> and also, if, you, if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like, oh, this person told us that they want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos, but nah, you, we think it's no. And oh, look, oh, they also hit the bell button, but nah, you guys are too controversial. We want to show them mainstream stuff. We want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even there are people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well. And share, share our videos because... You know, we do get demonetized, that's an obvious, on every one of our videos, so F that, but we don't care about that anymore. <laughs> but we also get deprioritized, and that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritized, what does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right, and all that, you know, on, the, on people's homepages, and that's how channels grow. Unfortunately, we can't grow, so we need you guys to share our videos 